Since the Battle of Naboo, the Supreme Chancellor of the Galactic Republic, Sheev Palpatine, had observed the Jedi Anakin Skywalker with a fastidious obsession. The secret Sith Lord knew that Anakin was immensely gifted in the Force, and preyed upon Anakin's frustrations with his master Obi-Wan Kenobi and the Jedi Council. The Chancellor continued to be a mentor to the Jedi Knight throughout his years of training, and as the Clone War that he had started reached its apex, he used his influence on the Jedi Knight. Aboard the flagship of the cyborg General Grievous, the Chancellor had staged his own capture, and testing the Jedi's abilities to become his future apprentice, Anakin managed to disarm the famed duelist Dooku. The Jedi felt conflicted between his teachings and the words of Palpatine, but the Chancellor had exerted enough of his influence to get Anakin to kill the Sith Apprentice. The death of Dooku escalated another set of decisions by the Jedi Council that happened to play perfectly into Palpatine's hands, as they do not grant Anakin the rank of Master, despite being presented with a seat on the Council as Palpatine's representative. This does not help Anakin's loyalty to the Jedi, with his nightmares about his wife Padme Amidala dying in childbirth at the forefront of his mind. After being given the mission to spy on his friend, Anakin is invited to the Galaxy's Opera House in the entertainment district of Coruscant's Galactic City, and as they watch the Mon Calamari ballet performance, Palpatine begins to tell the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise. Rather than being a Sith legend, it was actually his own memories of killing Plagueis. But Anakin was too engrossed in the story to realise that his friend was the Sith. Palpatine then remarked that it was ironic that Plagueis could save others and not himself, as Anakin sought to learn the powers to save others from death, namely Padme. But what if Palpatine had not referred to the tragedy as ironic? How would it influence Anakin? As you're going to see, one word could have changed the landscape of the galaxy. As Anakin absorbed every word of his mentor, the thoughts of the Jedi Knight turned to the nightmares of Padme. From what Palpatine was telling him, this Plagueis could be the answer to saving Padme, but he had been disappointed to hear that he had been killed by his apprentice. The Jedi Knight asked Palpatine if the apprentice still lived, as he had learnt all of the abilities from Plagueis, and the Chancellor told him that he was not aware that he had died. The Jedi Knight left the Opera House with more questions, and he entered the Council Chamber looking visibly distracted. Obi-Wan is nominated by the Council to find Grievous, but Anakin is only focused on saving Padme, and his conflict is detected by his master. Obi-Wan orders Anakin to stay patient and wait for him to complete his mission on Utapau, and the Jedi Knight bowed to his master before they parted ways. Anakin thought about the tale of Plagueis, and ran off to the Jedi Archives in a bid to search for the mysterious apprentice, but as Palpatine had told him, it was not something the Jedi would teach. Anakin trudged out of the temple when he received a transmission from Padme, asking him to return to her apartment. The Jedi quickly arrived in his speeder, and to Padme's insistence, he told her what had happened at the galaxy's opera house. Padme looked at the skyline of Coruscant, scarcely believing what she was hearing, then accused the Chancellor of trying to manipulate Anakin. The Jedi Knight could not believe what he was hearing, and after arguing over Palpatine, R2-D2 slid to the balcony and stunned Anakin. Padme realised that Anakin would be furious when he awoke, and as she was worried about leaving him unguarded, she asked her guards to take him to the closest cell they could find. Padme took the speeder that Anakin had left behind, and the Senator flew into the temple hangar, as the Master of the Order Mace Windu had arrived. Padme revealed what Anakin had told her, and the Jedi Master requested for the cell to be guarded by the clones, as he gathered a select group of Masters to rest the Chancellor. As Padme returned to her apartment to talk to Senator Organa, Windu Egan Kolar Kip Visto and Seizi Tin entered into Republic gunship and landed outside of the Chancellor's office. Palpatine turned around in his seat to the sound of his doors opening, and he knew that the Jedi had figured out his secret. To his concern, he could not sense Anakin, and igniting his blade, he threw it backwards at the window, then jumped. The Jedi tried to find him in the Night of Coruscant, but he had taken possession of a civilian speeder, before landing on the surface of the planet. In a maze of narrow streets, Palpatine executed Order 66, then instructed the clones to look for Anakin, as he then watched the chaos unfold. In the Chancellor's office, the four Jedi Masters continued to look for Palpatine, when they felt something dangerous in the Force. The rapid wave of footsteps was followed by the clones pointing their blasters, and they ordered the Jedi that they needed to die as an enemy of the Republic. Windu raised an eyebrow in disapproval, 
and blasted them all into the walls of the area, then guided the masters to the ground below, before trying to reach Padme. The senator told them that she had not heard from a security force, since Order 66 had commenced, and they all knew that Palpatine had left to find Anakin. Leaving the other council members to pursue the Chancellor, Mace Windu ran off to the temple, and found that their home was beginning to smolder and collapse. The Master of the Order had no time to consider all of the Jedi that had fallen, as he found a way through to the missions room. There he looked for any other Jedi across the galaxy, and he found that Obi-Wan had escaped Utapau, and was now flying to Coruscant. The Karun Master ordered him to remain above the skies, and try to block an escape from Palpatine, as Yoda also arrived to help the Jedi. The Grand Master had sensed Order 66 in time to try and save his order, and landing in the temple, he joined Mace Windu in trying to find the Chancellor. The Jedi charged to the military base, and outside of Anakin's cell, the bodies of the Naboo security force were scattered, and the Jedi looked for any clues. Finding the last recording on one of the bodies, the voice of Palpatine revealed that he was heading to a secret hideout to expose Anakin to his Sith artifacts. The Jedi are unsure of where to look when they hear an unexpected voice from behind them. Obi-Wan had disobeyed the order from Master Windu, as he could not merely hover in airspace and allow Anakin to fall to the dark side, so used his connection to Anakin to try and find him. The Jedi Master guided them all the way across the other side of the city, hoping that his risk would pay off and they find themselves in the shady industrial sector of the planet. The Jedi catch a glimpse of the blur of Palpatine's movement and try to reach him, but they are blocked by a Republic gunship, equipped with a squadron of the Coruscant Guard. The distraction of the clones allowed Palpatine to get away with Anakin, and it seemed he had completed his escape, until the Naboo star skiff of Senate Amidala hovered above them for a rescue. The Jedi jump aboard, as the blaster bolt of the clones ricocheted against the underside of the ship, and they then turned the laser cannons at the approaching hyperdrive docking ring, expecting Palpatine to try and evade them. But to their surprise, Palpatine did not intend for an escape, and as the Jedi continue to track the ship, they find an enormous Star Destroyer waiting for their leader. The Jedi are too late to respond to the tractor beam, so they prepared themselves for one final battle. Finally touching the surface of one of the many docking bays, they are not met by any clones or Sith, and Yoda could sense that this was a lure by Palpatine. The Grand Master divided them into groups, as they tried to rescue Anakin and defeat Palpatine, and very quickly, they managed to find Anakin floating in a tank. But as they untie him from the stand, Obi-Wan could sense the darkness from his Padawan, and ordered everyone to run. Anakin's eyes flickered open, and the continuous words of Palpatine, telling him that Padme had been killed by the Jedi, were the only thoughts in his mind. Releasing a giant burst of Force energy, the hidden Jedi were projected into the corridors of the ship, as Palpatine emerged from behind them to cackle at their failure. The Sith Lord started to launch pulses of lightning at the Jedi, gleefully watching them suffer from the pain he continued to inflict, until he is stopped by a massive explosion from behind the Jedi. Padme had not been able to leave the ship, due to the imminent birth of her children and the clone reinforcements blocking her path, and decided to blast through them all. Finally getting a chance to see Anakin, she fired at Palpatine, and the Sith Lord had to acrobatically leap away before he could be hit, as he then sneered at the surviving Senator. Anakin stared at Palpatine in disgust for his lies, and before Palpatine could crush Padme's ship with the Force, the Jedi Knight had pushed him to the edge of a chasm. Palpatine looked amused in the face of death, and Anakin did not hesitate in piercing a lightsaber through his former mentor. The death of Palpatine started a chain reaction, as the magic leaked out from his body, and onto several Rhydonium canisters. The subsequent explosion destroyed the entirety of Padme's ship, as well as their surroundings, as they began to tumble to Coruscant. All of the passengers held onto anything they could, and hurtling into the atmosphere, the Jedi tried to slow their fall when Bail Organa's ship arrived to collect them, as he takes them to his apartment. Whilst the Jedi begin to heal from their wounds, Padme gives birth to Luke and Leia, with the redeemed Anakin by her side, observed by his master and Yoda. The tale of Plagueis would be lost in history, until the darkness was ready to rise again. That is it for What If Palpatine Never Said Ironic. If you enjoyed this What If, please like this video, turn on that notification bell, click that subscribe button on this channel, as well as on my other channel What If Films. And as always, leave a comment on my What If you'd all like to see next, and how I can improve my videos. Thank you all very much for watching, and see you next time.